The Guardian Vanguard hoped that Rasputin might make a powerful ally, capable of mapping and reviving Golden Age military assets and recruiting them for the city's defense. But Rasputin has proven recalcitrant and high-handed, unresponsive to the city's outreach. We cannot characterize Rasputin's strategic objectives and capabilities, cannot define its physical or computational architecture, cannot ascertain its disposition with regard to the city, and cannot be sure it retains memory of events before the collapse. The Traveller came out of nowhere, entirely unanticipated. Imagine if it hadn't been friendly. Imagine that. Rasputin surely has. Welcome back, Guardians. Today we are revisiting the theory that Rasputin crippled the Traveller. I am, for the most part, very specific with my scripts and writing, often using phrases such as, I believe, I think, this means, I interpret this as, which are all intended as signposts, indicators to the listener that what I am saying is not fact, but an interpretation, an interpretation of the Grimoire cards. Unfortunately, I did not do this for the Collapse video. I made it seem like it was fact that Rasputin crippled the Traveller. I admit I've also been biased towards this topic in the past, so I hope this video will correct that and present some evidence to why Rasputin did not cripple the Traveller. If you have corrections like this in the future, please feel free to use my Discord and post in the Law section. However, try not to debate within the Law tab too much, as all you will do is bury your own feedback. Take any discussion into the general tab on Discord. This is Mylan Games, and I hope you enjoyed this latest Destiny Law episode. I want to structure this video based on a Reddit post by Gail Helimar. However, I'm not going to cover all the points in as much detail, so please feel free to read the post in its entirety. I will leave a link in the description. The first major point that is addressed in the post is about the Books of Sorrow, specifically how the Traveller was associated with two races, the Ammonites and the Harmony. The Traveller empowered the Ammonites with paracausal weapons allowing them to fight Oryx, Oryx would later become Oryx, the Taken King. Verse 2.6, the sword logic reads, at last, we knew curiosity would draw you back, Oryx. In their desperation, the Ammonite have begun using paracausal weapons. What are these? How do they work? Wouldn't you like to know? Suffice to say that some powers in this universe are superordinate to mere material physics. The source of these weapons is the Traveller, the sky's bait star. Their effect is subtle but devastating. Even though the Ammonites were using paracausal weapons, they were still destroyed by Oryx, and then the Traveller left them. Verse 2.9, Crusaders of the Books of Sorrow reads, It's done. Ear and Yal feed on the Leviathan's carcass. Zaphir Arath has made a temple of the Chroma Admiral's impaled corpse. Below us, Savathun's poisons stain the Ammonite home sea black. Their screams flavor the void. The Traveller has fled. The point being argued is that the Traveller empowered the Ammonites first and only fled once the Ammonites had been completely destroyed. So this may indicate that the Traveller would have done the same for us, i.e. the Traveller would not have fled humanity upon just seeing the darkness but would have provided us with the tools to defend ourselves. It would have stayed and fought like it did for the Ammonites. The second race I mentioned is the Harmony. It appears that the Traveller also empowered the Harmony, leaving behind an object referred to as the Gift Mast. The Gift Mast seems to contain a lot of light, which the Harmony were able to use. In verse 5.3, I'd shut them all in cells, reads, Harmony. When the Traveller passed across Harmony, it lied to the orbits of ten worlds. Now they orbit the black hole. The Traveller lied to the accretion disk, so that it would give warm light to these worlds. The Gift Mast. When the Traveller left Harmony, it made a monument out of the Black Hole's polar jet. 
In the jet there is a hollow mast which sings in radiance. This is the gift mast and we will devour it. We will eat the sky out of it. We will snap it like a bone. The harmony sting. The harmony have weaponized their dead star. The main point being made here is that the Traveller had already gifted the Harmony with advanced technology or at least the means to fight Oryx, i.e. the Gift Mast, and the reason for the Traveller leaving the Harmony was not necessarily related to the Darkness of Oryx. It seems that the Traveller had already left the Harmony prior to the arrival of Oryx. The Reddit post argues that there is no solid precedent that the Traveller simply flees and abandons civilizations on the arrival of the Darkness. Using the same line of thinking, we can examine the Fallen to give some indication to the behavior of the Traveller and how it previously aligned with other races and responded to Oryx and of the Darkness. Unfortunately, there is very little information regarding the Traveller leaving the Fallen and very little information is known about the Whirlwind. However, the most common referenced card relating to the Traveller leaving the Fallen is the Varric the Loyal Grimmel card, which reads, First, the great machine. Then, sky fell away. Whirlwind ripped away the past. All honor lost, all hope, judgment not enough. Cannot keep wolves from kings, scar from winter. Fell to fighting, fell to hate. Some will argue because it says, first, the great machine, it implies that the traveler fled as the darkness approached, and then the whirlwind happened. Whereas others may see this as two separate events, similar to the Harmony. The Traveller had already left for reasons unknown to us, and then the Whirlwind occurred. Whilst we do not know what happened during the Whirlwind, I do believe, like the author of this post, that the Fallen encountered Oryx as indicated by the King's Fall raid weapons that refer to Chelchus, the Kell of Stone. To summarize the information so far, the argument is we should not use the Ammonites, the Harmony, and the Fallen as evidence for the Traveller fleeing when faced by the Darkness. Because why the Traveller left these races is not truly known. I think that is a fair point, so now let's move on to the Dreams of Alpha Loopy cards. These cards reinforce the same point that the Traveller did not flee previous civilizations. It visited these races, gave them their own golden age, and then left. The cards also imply that the Traveller chose our civilization to build and actually fight the darkness. Ghost Fragment the Traveller reads, You have lived as invisibly as possible, flicking from solar system to solar system, making grand plans, overseeing the culturing of civilizations, before leaving in a blink. But you have no recollection of ever wanting worship or even thanks for those blessed by you. Like I said, the Traveller was just building civilizations and then leaving, not necessarily fleeing the darkness. I can understand this line of thinking, however in the Books of Sorrow and in the Ghost Fragment The Traveller 2, it refers to this chase, the chase between the Traveller and the darkness. I do assume that the Traveller knew it was being pursued, it knew it was being tracked by the darkness. And so personally, I think it much more likely that the Traveller only visited these races to create proxy armies to slow down Oryx and the darkness. Just like it says in the Darkness Grimmel card, which reads, Certain positions, often labelled heretical, imply that the Traveller itself triggered the collapse or that it knew the darkness was coming for it, and hoped to use the solar system as a sacrifice or proxy army. However, even if this was the case, even if the Traveller was arming civilizations as distractions, sacrifices to slow down Oryx, that does not mean that the Traveller was going to do this to us. This may sound too evil for the Traveller to do, but do remember that the Traveller was willing to do anything to trap the Worm Gods on the Fundament, which included creating the God Wave known as the Syzygy, designed to wipe out all the species on the planet and prevent the Worm Gods from making a symbiotic pact. However, like I said, even if it did do this, creating these proxy armies to slow down Oryx, it does not mean that the Traveller intended to sacrifice us. In fact, the Ghost Fragment the Traveller 2 Grimmel card implies the opposite. It reads, This has been such a long chase. This will be the place you will fight, fight and win. 
This implies that the Traveler chose to stay and fight. It did not intend to flee the darkness when it reached humanity. The last Dreams of Afalupi card that I wanted to discuss is the Ghost Fragment the Traveler 3 card. The Ghost Fragment the Traveler 3 card reads, The knife had a million blades, and you were giant, powerful and swift, but the knife pinned you, cut your godly flesh away. The author of this post makes the comparison of the knife to the darkness. This is very reasonable because all of the Taken Grimoire cards refer to a knife. When Oryx takes these beings, he refers to all of their weaknesses, then changes them, improving them and gifting them with a knife. So if the knife represents a weapon of the darkness, then this card confirms that the darkness crippled the Traveler, not Rasputin. Whilst I believe this is completely reasonable, I do have one major rebuttal to this, and that is in the Ghost Fragment Mysteries Grimoire card, where it implies that Rasputin fought the darkness using a weapon called Aurora Knives. The card reads, Consider it the power, Tottenhamac, world ender, and consider what it means. I met it at the gate of the garden, and I recall it smiled at me before it devoured the blossoms with black flame and pinned their names across the sky. It was stronger than everything. I fought it with aurora knives, and with the stolen and fire of singularities made sharp, and my sweat was earthquake, and my breath was static, but it was stronger, so how did I survive? If this is in fact Rasputin speaking in this card, then the million knives that pinned the Traveler could be Rasputin. And I do believe that this card is referring to Rasputin, as at the beginning of the card it says, I bear an old name, it cannot be killed. And in Ghost Fragment Rasputin 4 it says, And you are certainly not mine, although once you must have been. I bear an old name, it cannot be killed, not even here. As you can see, I don't believe anything I've mentioned so far could be used as conclusive evidence that Rasputin did or did not cripple the Traveler. So now let's move on to the Rasputin cards, which I think is often the centerpiece for this discussion. The main card in question is Ghost Fragment Rasputin 5. This is the card that essentially hints that Rasputin may have crippled the Traveler. The card provides a list of conditions that must be met and if met, the card provides an action plan for what to do. The action plan reads, Stand by for decision point. If available, ISR and War Watch indicates imminent something departure. Then, something departure compromises human, nigger human survival and epoch strategy. Stand by for abhorrent imperative. Activate Loki Crown, perform deniable authorization, full catometric and notic release, prevent something departure by any means available, stand by for effect assessment criteria, coerce pseudo altruistic something defense action, defer civilization kill. Many have accepted that the symbol represents the traveler. So this card means that if all of the requirements were met, then Rasputin would cripple the Traveler, prevent Traveler's departure by any means available. Because Rasputin predicted that this would force the Traveler to create defensive mechanisms, as it says coerce pseudo-altruistic something defense action. So one of the first questions that I think should be answered is, were all of the requirements slash conditions met? So let's go through each line, each requirement that must be met for Rasputin to enact this plan that prevents the Traveler from escaping. The first requirement is under Corey, white or black. This requirement is met in Ghost Fragment Darkness Grimoire card where it says I am evoking Corey white and assuming control of solid defenses. The next requirement is if security state is Egyptian. I believe this requirement is also met in the Ghost Fragment Darkness Grimoire card when it says Quarterize public sources to secure ISIS and harden for defensive action. ISIS being an Egyptian god is a clue to this requirement being fulfilled. The next requirement is If event rack is Tellard, traumatic context or sky shock, outside context. 
I believe this requirement is met also in Ghost Remnant Darkness when it says promote event to Skyshock OCP extinction. The next requirement is if Veluspa is active and in failure, sign up to Fenrir and Satur. Once again, the Ghost Remnant Darkness Grimoire card reads activate Veluspa. And then in the Ghost Frame at Rasputin 3, it says, Forecasts unanimously predict terminal Veluspa failure. The next requirement is, if Yuga is active and in Sundown. I believe this requirement was met in the Ghost Frame at Rasputin 3 card, which says, I'm declaring Yuga Sundown effective on receipt. The next requirement is, if AI Com has granted permissive potentiation to outboard resilient instances. I do not have any reference to this requirement being met. So I do think it reasonable for you to argue that not all the requirements were met so Rasputin never crippled the Traveler. I think you could argue that this is evidence for the Traveler not being crippled by Rasputin. Regardless, let's keep checking the other requirements. The next reads, if tactical morality is built at midnight, I believe this requirement is met in the Ghost Frame at Rasputin 3 Grimmel card, which reads Format Moral Structures for Midnight Exeget. After all of these conditions slash requirements, the card continues and reads Standby for Decision Point. If available ISR and Warwatch indicates imminent summit departure, then summit departure compromises human, neo human survival and epoch strategy. Now this requirement, this condition, is the requirement I would debate the most. As far as I'm aware, we do not know if this was ever met. We do not know if ISR and Watch indicated that the Traveler was going to leave. There are hints within the Grimoire cards that Rasputin did not trust the Traveler, like the opening quote I used from Ghost Fragment Old Russia 3, which reads, The Traveler came out of nowhere, entirely unanticipated, Imagine if it hadn't been friendly, imagine that. Rasputin surely has. Also, this may suggest Rasputin was suspicious of the Traveller. It does not mean that Rasputin determined with confidence that the Traveller would leave. If this requirement is not met, then Rasputin would not take action and would not cripple the Traveller. The main argument here is that the Ghost Fragment Rasputin 5 is a plan not a report. It is not necessarily saying what happened. The card itself even says contingent action order. A contingent action order may mean this is a contingency plan, which is a plan designed to take account of a possible future event or circumstance. This card is planning a scenario if the traveler decides to leave. It is not a recount of events that actually happened. Further supporting this, the Reddit post speaks about the ordering of the Rasputin cards, the Ghost Fragment Darkness card, and the Sleeper Simulant card according to their subject lines. These cards start with a series of numbers and letters, and also end with a series of numbers and letters. For example, the Ghost Fragment Rasputin 5 card reads like this. This may indicate the order in which the cards should be read. If this is the case, then the Ghost Fragment Rasputin 5 is actually the very first card. It has the lowest number at V101. The Ghost Fragment Darkness is the next card with V113. Ghost Fragment Rasputin 3 is the next with V120. Ghost Fragment Rasputin 6 is next with V150. And Sleeper Simulant is last with V156. Once again, this would support that the statements in Ghost Fragment Rasputin 5 are simply a plan that did not necessarily happen. Ghost Fragment 5 is the very first card in this series. Now, just to be devil's advocate, I do have some rebuttals to this line of thinking. Firstly, the Ghost Fragment Darkness Grimoire card appears to document when Rasputin first detected the darkness. And following the previously mentioned naming sequence, the Ghost Fragment Darkness card comes second after Rasputin 5. Rasputin 5 is a contingency plan. Why would Rasputin make a contingency plan if he had not yet encountered, detected the darkness? Why did Rasputin make a contingency plan that accounted for the traveler leaving if the darkness had not yet been detected? Secondly, the series of numbers and letters also end with a distinct pattern. We're not too sure how these numbers may impact the order of the cards, and so 
And so I think it's reasonable to be hesitant about ordering the cards based upon just the first numbers and letters. Thirdly, I believe Seth Dickinson, the primary writer of the Books of Sorrow, also made comment on the headings in the Rasputin cards. However, it did not confirm that the numbers and letters were timestamps. I believe this was spoken about in the interview with Destiny Ghost Stories on episode 22. However, unfortunately, I have not found the direct quote, so please take that with a pinch of salt. Lastly, I would argue that the Rasputin 5 Grimoire card coming first in this sequence of cards is actually greater evidence for Rasputin crippling the Traveller. I believe the card is more than a plan. Rasputin is a computer. This is a script. This is code telling Rasputin's systems how to react with certain conditions. The card says it is subtle assets imperative. An imperative means giving an authoritative command. So if this card comes first, as the Reddit post suggests, this is the authoritative script. This is the code that dictates how the system will react to certain events. As the events are occurring, the script is running in the background and checking off the criteria as it occurs. Karay White, check. Egyptian Security State, check. Sky Shock, check. Yuga, check. Etc, etc. And so I believe this whole video, this whole discussion boils down to one of the requirements, one of the conditions that must be met in Rasputin 5. If available ISR and Warwatch indicates imminent Summic Departure, then Summic Departure compromises human, near-human survival and epoch strategy. As far as I am aware, we do not know if Rasputin detected the imminent departure of the Traveller. And like this Reddit post suggests, we should not use the Fallen, the Ammonites or the Harmony as precedent for the Traveller's behaviour. So. We will have to just add this to the list of Destiny mysteries that I hope will receive some resolution in Destiny 2. However, I do have a feeling that this will remain a mystery for some time to come. Thank you for your feedback on the Collapse video. I apologize for misleading anyone to make it seem like it was fact that Rasputin crippled the Traveller. It definitely is not fact. That concludes this latest Destiny Law episode. If you'd like to support the channel, leave the word departure to indicate that this conversation all boils down to whether Rasputin detected the Traveller's departure. As usual, it's been a pleasure. This is Mullen Games. Peace. Okay, real, real, real talk after script. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching. I just wanted to add that I feel that making a Reddit post and making a YouTube video have different objectives. And I feel like YouTube videos have the added pressure of being entertaining. And personally, I find that picking a side, picking a theory, and putting all these pieces of the puzzle together to support that theory is more entertaining than just an informative video. And I feel like Destiny Law videos are actually pretty difficult to make because you're trying to balance this information and entertainment. I hope people can understand that and understand that this is just my interpretation of the Grimoire cards. And I don't think there is a right or a wrong answer, but the end goal is hopefully you are entertained and hopefully it encourages you to do your own research and look into the Grimoire cards and look into Destiny Law and be excited about the law. Double peace.